children who are obese become adolescents who are obese become adults who are obese. One in four of our kindergarten students are overweight or obese. By the time they're in third grade, 34% are overweight or obese. You can see where we get to 65% of adults in New Mexico are overweight or obese. We are increasingly seeing a number of young kids, 10 years or younger, with onset of type 2 diabetes. This is a disease that we never used to see in kids this young. As one gets older, the frequency of diabetes, of heart disease, of all sorts of medical conditions increases in those who are obese. If we continue on this trend, kids of today will not outlive their parents. as a society, as a community, really have to start focusing and putting a lot more incentive around the prevention side. Two main things here, calories in and calories out. In is what you eat and drink, out is how you burn it off. It's like dancing, walking, running, anything you can think of. So we'll look at all of that, but remember, calories in, calories out. More out, less in, you lose weight. More in, less out, you gain weight. The point is, if you... We created a video, and it's based on what the adolescents and their parents had told us they want in the video. We're really trying to help adolescents in high school to eat healthier and be more active. And if they need to lose weight, then we help them to do that, too. Food is fun. I love to eat, but there are ways to do this right. Food is fuel. You have to have it. If we think about it, it just makes sense. But uh, just remember to keep score. Achieving a healthy weight is about balancing the calories you take in, eat and drink, with the calories you burn, the calories you work off physically. Calories are a way to measure energy. Which One of the biggest issues that contributes is both parents have to work, and so you don't have one parent at home. And the second issue is increased use of technology. They're inside the home, on the TV screen, or on the computer screen, on the cell phone, more than they are outside. Some kids seem to have issues with eating balanced because of homework or extracurricular activities. There's sweets and junk food. It's so easy to get. It'd be so much easier to just grab a bag of chips. Spice too, because it's kind of common knowledge that organic also means more expensive. Most mornings when I try to eat breakfast, I'm in too much of a hurry to get to school on time. It definitely takes more time for me to eat healthy in the mornings. It's easier just to go to a fast food chain than drive all the way to a place that has healthy food. There's a new regulation called Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act and it's actually mandated that every child take at least a half cup of fresh fruit or vegetable every day. The long-term concept is that kids will get used to taking fresh fruits and vegetables every day and 10 years from now it'll be a habit. It's just a very hectic schedule and I think that's a problem with eating healthy because it's more of convenience and accessibility and time because I'm exhausted. I don't want to make like this healthy meal. I want something quick and easy. It's really hard to get students to really care about their nutrition and really understand the effects of the food that they're eating on a daily basis. What we know in the brain is that the hippocampus is smaller in people who have obesity. Why is that important? Because hippocampus is where we store memory. Children with obesity are not doing as well in school and if it's related to the fact that their memory is not as good a shape, that would make a lot of sense. 
I think our society is really built on today of I want it now. Where looking 50 years ahead to your health, it seems a long time. It doesn't really affect you. According to the Trust for America Health, the incidence of diabetes cardiac disease, and hypertension are going to skyrocket, especially in New Mexico, given our current state of overweight and obesity in our patients. Once you become overweight and obese, your body establishes this point for you called a set point and um, even if you lose weight or get to a healthier weight your body will constantly be trying to get back to that set point so we want to try to prevent that prevent the obesity starting with our children at the youngest age that we can We're a large rural frontier state where access to healthy local food supply can be challenging. Food distribution is over large distances, so we don't necessarily have the resources for people to make a healthy choice. You have food deserts. We have patients that come to clinic who will say, I would like to eat fruits and vegetables, but the reality is where I live, there is one convenience store and Albuquerque is over an hour away. So it is more convenient to buy prepackaged foods uh, for these families, which are high in calorie. Roadrunner Food Bank is the largest, most comprehensive hunger relief organization for the state of New Mexico. We bring food in, we rescue it from all over the state, and then we distribute it to hundreds of partner agencies across the state from food pantries, soup kitchens, shelters, senior centers, elementary, middle, and high schools. And as a collective network, we serve over 70,000 New Mexicans every single week. We are number two in the nation for childhood food insecurity. Poverty impacts nutrition for kids in many ways at many different levels, whether that's at home, at school, in the outer environment in which they all live. 75% of people who stand in our food lines reported purchasing inexpensive, unhealthy foods, knowing they were unhealthy because it was all they could afford. 59% of our clients have to make the decision between paying for food and paying for medicine or medical care at least once in a year. We know that lower income families with higher rates of food insecurity tend to have uh, higher rates of obesity. There's that sort of obesity poverty paradox and food insecurity paradox that folks talk about. If we're hungry, how could it be overweight? The research shows that in low-income neighborhoods, there are very few to no full-service supermarkets and a disproportionate amount of fast food restaurants. So you have this barrier of physical access. Where are you going to get the fresh fruits and vegetables? On the other hand, you have the monetary aspect of it, which is that fresh fruits and vegetables are much more expensive than high calorie, high energy, dense foods. And so you have low income families who are dealing with two issues, physical access, where do I find the fresh fruits and vegetables and monetary access, how do I afford them? So today we have kale, chard, and salad greens. How much are they? Um, but because we're giving up to $10 free, if you want to try more than one, you're more than welcome to. We're at a mobile farmer's market here at First Choice Community Health Center, and we are at this clinic providing the patients, community members, um, and employees here fresh local produce and recipes, free samples and food demos to make eating healthy easy. Well, have a great day. Thank you. So we have rainbow chard, and this is my favorite because 
the stems are different colors and you can cook it like spinach. Oh, you can eat it raw? And you can eat it raw, you can make salads out of it. I tend to cook I it. i try that, I've never tried This is important for many reasons. When a doctor tells a patient, eat healthier, who knows how effective that's gonna be, but when a doctor can say, hey, there's a market outside of our clinic, it's a convenient location, they get not just the produce at a good price point, but a way for our community to get exposed to healthy options. Thank you so much. We can tear off some of the pieces from other stems too. Especially at this age, I think it's really important to teach kids exactly how to eat healthy and how sort of to prepare food in a way that'll make it taste good. Do it in like a circular sort of motion right along these little veins here. And before that, you can notice that the leaves are a little bit wet because we washed it. But you need to wash it. Exactly. It's also really important to give kids choice, we find. That facilitates a little more adventurous eating. You can kind of bang it on the side there. They're more likely to try it if they have some say or some way of helping in the preparation. Beautiful. Good job. Just giving them a sense of what healthy eating and cooking looks like. That comes out really fast. When I saw the kids cook part and they just jumped yeah. right in. You need one half tablespoon. It's really opened the door to different vegetables and a sense of healthy eating and, and good choices. Why do you want to eat the rainbow? Um, it's not like eating the rainbow that's up in the sky. It's having all kinds of different foods and being and eating a rainbow is good for you because you're able to try new things instead of sticking to one thing all the time and be healthy. And the brighter a food is, the more nutritious it is, naturally. That's true. I like to say use color as your norm for the plate. The more color you have in your plate, the better it is. If you can bring it from the land, from the earth to the table, that will be the best idea. So in our clinic, we, we don't talk about calories. They don't have a balance to measure, uh, pounds, uh, and so forth. So we use the hand, and we call it the hand method. So the size of the hand that belongs to the child will be appropriate size of the plate for the child. Then we talk about the whole hand. That would be the amount of uh, fruits and vegetables, which represent the 50% in the plate. Yeah? Then we talk about the palm, and that would be the amount of protein. So chicken breast, fish, uh, and the steak, if they decide to do that. And then we close the hand, and that would be the grains. And I like to put my hand this way, talk about maybe pasta whatever fits in the hand. We try to make sure that they mostly drink water and 2% or 1% milk. There's lots of things that people can do to get healthier. One simple approach is to quit having sweetened beverages available in the home. If it's not available, there's less temptation and everyone is participating so no one feels like it's punitive. One of the big sweetened beverage products that we see, and it's a big trend that's been going on for quite some time, is Gatorade. Drinks are a big deal for everyone, but be sure to keep score. First, let's look at Gatorade. What's in it before it's in you? In a 20 ounce Gatorade, there's nine teaspoons of sugar. So, a Gatorade 20 ounce bottle is 130 calories. And in order to burn that off, you need to That's why folks use Gatorade for sports. It's because of the exercise. It's a sports drink. So you should only really drink it when you're really active. Or better yet, just drink water. Water hydrates and does a much better job. You don't have the effects of the sugar and other um, things that you don't need. Another one is Capri Sun, Kool-Aid, Lemonade, Tea, all of these things are all considered sweetened beverages. People think of orange juice as being healthy. However, it takes to make one eight ounce glass of orange juice approximately six large oranges. Could you imagine eating six oranges, how full you would get in one sitting? Whereas drinking a glass of orange juice doesn't have the same impact on your stomach. However, you still 
have all the calories of consuming six oranges and that contributes to the total calories for the day and liquid calories which adds up. So when you look at labels you have to be careful of what the label says. Uh, you have to look at the number of servings. A lot of times you'll say, well, this doesn't have that many calories. But yet, when you actually look at the label, it's eight servings and not just one serving. Here's something to watch out for. They say there's only 170 calories per serving. But be sure to check how many servings are in the bag. In the grab bag, there are about two and a half servings. That means about two and a half times 170. So this bag is really 410 calories. And in order to burn that off, you need to walk 107 minutes, or dance 70 minutes, or run 44 minutes. Look at it this way. Each individual Cheeto is eight calories, each one. And in order to burn off one Cheeto, you'd need to walk two minutes, or dance one and a half minutes, or run just about one minute. Oh, hey, I found your sister. No? Then you have to wait, remember? Does everyone have one? Yes. You. Bone up and eat. Bone up and eat. Bone up and eat. What do you all think of what you made? Good. Good. We're a large rural frontier state where there isn't a lot of opportunity for safe physical activity. You know, sidewalks and curbs and gutters and paved trails. Sometimes in these areas, when you ask a kid or their parent to go for a walk, well, sometimes that's not safe because there's dogs around or the roads aren't paved where it's accessible to, to walk. So sometimes these easy messages of going out and doing some physical activity isn't as easy as we all think. Where you eat, live, and play makes a huge contribution to how healthy you will be in the future. In an area like Rio Rancho, you run the risk that if you don't get in front of this and do some strategic planning on, on a vision of what this area could in fact evolve to, It'll be a hodgepodge of different uh, uh, groups that'll come in and put up a, a building here, a restaurant there, uh, you know, and it will have no connectivity. Let's make that transition. Let's, let's create that. This is now. We started meeting as a group of local, again, stakeholders uh, three years ago. The, the Unser Gateway Coalition was formed, and we started having meetings once a month. We have a cross-section of disciplines. We have architects, planners, land use experts. We can put something in there for teenagers to do. Urban Land Institute three years ago started what's called a super topic called Building Healthy Places Initiative. So Urban Land Institute is trying to leverage Rio Rancho's uh, asset which is safety and combine it with walkable, bikeable environments. Instead of just talking about ideas, you start to get renderings, you start to get a plan. It's a master plan. This whole concept of how to build a healthy place, a healthy environment, so that people can come and say, that's where I want to live, that's where I want to raise my children. This is an amazing playground that our volunteers have come together today to build for Catholic Charities. Our children these days don't get physical activity like they used to in the past. So by building a playground in a safe environment, this encourages children to play and be active and stay healthy in a safe place. We're talking about many families who are working poor. So you're talking about parents who work one and a half, two jobs each. So they don't have the time to take the children to the playground or take them out in the evening. I mean, their parents sometimes come home exhausted and let alone. So, and it's so important to a child's development, both physically and psychologically. Play is so important. So this is essential. Children learn eating and physical activity behaviors at a very early age. We shape behaviors when kids are young. And if they're shaped to sit and watch movies or play on their video devices or not have much physical activity, then those are the behaviors that they adopt as they get older. Okay, on one hand, we have eating and food. 
And on the other side of the score is physical activity. But how do you even start getting physically active? According to national guidelines for kids, you need 60 minutes daily. Whoa, hold on. I just need to start. Get real. 60 minutes daily? Come on. I don't have time to exercise. How about walking faster to class? Start by trying to do 10 minutes a day. Think, take 10. 10 minutes, two times a day. Pretty soon, you'll be doing more and more. Just 30 to 60 minutes, three to five times a week will help you get to your healthy weight. Every morning, we go out and um, run. We run every day. Um, so our kids start their day by going out for a, it's about a mile run after all is said and done. The whole school. Once in a while, we get parents involved. They'll come out and run or walk with their child. The things that we have noticed, the kids are alert. They're ready to learn. In fact, it's key to our state testing coming up. They've tested this and shown you can get a statistically higher score on a test if you walk for 15 to 20 minutes before you take the test. I would bet it's partly because you're increasing the blood flow and the nutrients that are going to the brain when you exercise. And they come back and they have breakfast in the classroom. So there's no loss of instructional time. We gain it all back with the kids alert and ready to, to learn. Breakfast is actually very important to prevent obesity. Um, people have tried to just sort of skip meals. Um, but breakfast has been correlated with actually less weight gain. If we give them breakfast and we give them a good composition of that breakfast and we teach them how to move, they can then have control over their bodies and the hope downstream would be that they will have their hippocampus work better, get bigger and stay that way. Whether it's brain breaks in the classroom or physical activity, at least 15, 20 minutes a day, I think, that, I think we owe it to our students to, to do it. I don't think it's a. It's, I don't think it's an option. Come on, let's move our bodies. Ten by ten is really testing the notion that children, if they're educated and empowered, can be effective health ambassadors to their families and to their friends. Okay, read this to me again, Jeremiah. I ate an apple. And what else were you going to write? I ate an apple and and some protein, and you can also write what you drank. We have a booklet that was distributed in early February to all the first grade classes around Sandoval County. And then eventually the kids take the booklet home, and it becomes a shared tool for activities between parents and kids and family members. I saw that this was going to put the parents and these kids together and teach them about things they can do after school when they go home. Ride your bike, you know. Did you jump on the trampoline this morning before you came to school? So when you jump on the trampoline, what were you doing? Exercise. exercise. That's right. Why do you think it's exercise? Making your legs get stronger. Get stronger. What other parts it's important to start at this age because they start now making good habits, good choices. You help your sister. I always ask him, did you have breakfast this morning? I even have him looking at the labels on their cereal box now. Let's look for the sugars. You could put yes at lunch. I ate an apple and a protein. So we talk about moderation of eating. Let's have some chips, but let's not overdo it. But let's have some carrots and celery, too, you know, to balance it out. They loved making the posters. We made this huge plate. It's called a plate full of healthy. And they went and got magazines. They had to cut out proteins, grains, vegetables, and fruit. And they would get so excited when they would find something. Is this a good fruit, Miss Lauer? Is this a good grain? Giving them this information will show them. And then they would say, hey, Mom, let's buy apples and oranges and pears instead of Doritos and cookies. And if you keep planting that seed in them, it's going to grow. If the family participates in the lifestyle change as an entire unit, um, the outcomes are better and those outcomes last longer. What we ask of our participants in Zumba is that you guys move. 
and that's it. We just want to get you guys moving, get you guys dancing, and get you guys feeling the music. We really don't care if you don't do the exact choreography that we do. We created Live Fit Family Challenge to help provide a support for families to come together and learn about ways they can be active together, ways that they can make changes to um, what they eat, um, and really provide some opportunities on a weekly basis for them to practice those so that by the end of the program, they can really take charge of their own health. I have a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 15-year-old who's at Alpcree High School. Our big challenges with exercise are number one, time, finding time. With the exercise, I think the Robux are time and making it an important thing. The seed that we plant is that you guys have to be planning for this. So we're called the Live Fit Family Challenge because we challenge them each week to kind of do some of these small changes that we're talking about and then hopefully some of those will stick. So what do you think about saying it's a reward? Using sweet treats as a reward for finishing other food can make sweets more desirable than other foods. It may lead to ignoring body signals of fullness. And one of our lessons is specifically focused on talking to the parents about role modeling. It's just hard as a parent to kind of know what to say. Lighting a Cheeto on fire. So even though we're kind of trying to praise them, which is good, right? It's not about that they're a good kid because they finished it all. Because if they really didn't need all that, that's going to be okay too, as long as it's kind of a balanced plate. We follow the 75210 kind of zip code to health. Eat breakfast. Try to get five fruits and veggies a day, two hours or less of screen time each day, an hour of activity, and no sugary beverages, or as little as possible. And we're going to be using some whole wheat English muffins. Do you guys know why whole wheat is better than all-purpose flour to eat? We really focus on family meals in this program. There's so many things that happen. There's so much research around family meals and the benefits as far as your grades and not doing drugs and all those kinds of things that we know all our parents want. Just start simple. Start with one step, a real specific change that the family can make together um, that you know over time will have an impact. It is not a diet because those aren't sustainable. You go on a diet, you gain the weight back. It doesn't work. You have to be patient. One change at a time that you incorporate into your life and it becomes your lifestyle forever. Okay, is it easy? No. Does it happen all at once? No. Can you get to your healthy weight overnight? No. But you can do it and maintain it for life. Set a goal. A small one. Stick to it. And then, then set another goal. A small one. Stick to it. And make it a part of your life. Before you know it, it's happening. Lifelong healthy changes. Now, let's do some dancing. Being a father, and a role model to my kids, I think that physical fitness is very important. We have like diabetes in our family, so I feel like us, you know, getting a head start with the kids as far as physical fitness and trying to bring that into their lives. All right, the next one you can do with that. Hopefully they continue that when they grow up. As a family doctor, I don't think for any of my patients the medications that I prescribe are are curing. I think they're they're band-aid kind of treatments for things long downstream such as overweight inactivity that this here represents. We're going to see how many steps you guys get in a mile. Right, Hopefully so what we're creating is a model for health that is truly about health and not health care, not health care insurance, not medical prescriptions. Running Medicine started to create a family-oriented running, walking, fitness, wellness program. Go. There aren't many places where families come to exercise together. You think about families go to eat fast food together and families go to munch on popcorn at the movies together, but there, there aren't many opportunities that allow families to come and use this as time together in 
exchange for a time in front of the TV. And creating a real loving environment that tells people without any words when they show up that regardless of your fitness level, your age, your ability level, you're welcome here. Push yourself to that next limit for you. Say hi to someone on your travels. It's important to do these things as a group because in the native tradition, you know, everything you do is it has to deal with your relations, you know, not just your family, but your whole community. And so when you have a community like Running Medicine helping you to get healthy, it makes it much easier for you and for everyone else because it's not like you're doing this alone. You can be happy and have the support that you need to do it. Think of the good things you've done and let that push you as you go through your week. It goes back to the family orientation of gathering and not just getting out and having to burn calories or lose weight or look at the issues around and concerns around diabetes or obesity. Those eventually came, but I think when they really just wanted to focus on health, then they themselves began to realize what that meant. And so that included being able to be positive, increasing their self-esteem as well. And so everyone wants to line up there together. We have to see it in a really big picture. We can't look at this as though this is something that just happened overnight. These issues are a product of very, very deeply rooted, long-term historical processes, maybe even going back to colonial periods where patterns of inequality were established a century ago or more. Things that we think of far upstream, the social determinants of health, poverty, and things that make you not think as much about your body, living in environments that are traumatic, living in places that aren't safe, that just make it very difficult to think about health-promoting behaviors. We use running and walking as the distractor to toward wellness. It's the thing that gets all of us, our family included, into the door, and then the door opens, and and lots of other good things happen. People tend to blame the victim. And they tend to think, oh, if people just worked harder, if they were smarter, they'd figure out a way to get themselves out of this situation. And what they don't understand is all of the complex social and economic and historical and cultural things that have helped create the problems that we see today. So if we don't have an understanding that's very holistic, we won't be able to solve these problems.